Today we're going to exhibit a family of solutions to a tweaked version of the equation inside of Fermat's last theorem. But before we get started, let's recall what Fermat's last theorem says, which is if we have natural numbers or a, an equation over the natural numbers, x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n, where n is bigger than or equal to 3, that equation has no solutions. Now, of course, if n is equal to 1, there are infinitely many very, very simple solutions. And if n is equal to 2, there are also infinitely many solutions. Those are exactly the Pythagorean triples. But famously, there are no solutions if n is bigger than or equal to 3. But now what I want to do is look at a related equation. And that equation looks like this. What about x to the l? plus y to the m equals z to the n. So in other words, what if all those exponents are different? So can we decide when it's possible for this equation to have solutions and maybe exhibit some solutions in a special case or two? Okay, so let's look at this and how will we do this? Well, the trick is to consider the GCD of L, M, and N. In other words, the greatest common divisor. So let's let D equal the GCD of L, M, and N. But what does that mean? So that means that there exists L naught, M naught, and N naught, which are natural numbers, with L equals D times L naught, m equals d times m naught, and finally n equals d times n naught. Well, that's exactly what it means to be a common divisor. Now, the greatest common divisor is simply, well, the biggest common divisor. And we're not actually going to use anything about the greatest part just at this moment. Okay. So now let's plug these versions of L, M, and N into our equation right here. And we'll have x to the d times L naught plus y to the d times M naught equals z to the d times N naught. But now let's observe that we can write that as x to the L naught raised to the d power plus y to the M naught raised to the d power equals z to the d to the, or sorry, z to the n naught raised to the d power, simply by exponent rules. But now let's introduce some notation. So let's set capital X equal to x to the l naught. We'll set capital Y equal to y to the m naught and capital Z equal to z to the n naught. And now let's rewrite this equation using these substitutions. And that will give us x to the d plus y to the d equals z to the d. But now we've brought that back down to an equation that looks like the equation inside of Fermat's last theorem. So that means we have solutions if and only if d is equal to 1 or it's equal to 2. So we're not going to look at the case when d is equal to 2. We're going to look at the case when d is equal to 1. And we'll exhibit some solutions in the case when d is equal to 1. And now, furthermore, we're not going to really look at the case where all of these exponents are free. We're going to look at the case when L and M are the same. In other words, we're going to look at the equation x to the m plus y to the m equals z to the n with the condition that the GCD of m and n is equal to 1. And we'll exhibit some solutions inside of this setup. Okay, so let's get to that. So like I said before, we're going to exhibit a family of solutions to the Diophantine equation x to the m plus y to the m equals z to the n, where gcd of m and n is equal to 1. In other words, m and n are relatively prime. And I should point out here that 
This set of solutions is well known, and it's been known since 1914. Well, perhaps before, but it's attributed to L. Aubrey from 1914. So let's see what we can do here. So first what we'll do is find numbers u and v, which are natural numbers, satisfying the following condition. And that condition is that n times v minus m times u is equal to 1. So I should point out here that this is possible because these two numbers are relatively prime. So this is a well-known rule that if you have two numbers that are relatively prime, you can find a linear combination of the integers of them equal to 1. More generally, you can find a linear combination, combination of two integers building their GCD. But notice that this minus sign here is put in so that we can guarantee that these are inside natural numbers, not just integers. Okay, great. And then next up what we'll do is set x and y equal to, well, two things involving u, v, m, and n. So what we'll do is set x equal to a times a to the m plus b to the m, all raised to the u power. And here a and b are free to be any natural number that we would like. And then we'll similarly set y equal to b times a to the m plus b to the m, again raised to the u power, where a and b are, well, like I said, they're free to be any natural number. That's uh, how we're building this infinite family of solutions. And then after we do that, all we have to do is simply make a calculation. So let's look at x to the m plus y to the m, which turns out to be a to the m, let's see, times a to the m plus b to the m raised to the m u, and then plus let's see, y to the m, which will be b to the m, and then we have a to the m plus b to the m, all raised to the m u. But now observe that we can factor this a to the m plus b to the m raised to the m u out of this entire thing. And after rewriting that, that'll leave us with a to the m plus b to the m raised to the m u plus one. Okay, but now let's observe that by this equation right here, this nv minus mu equals 1, that means that this mu plus 1 is simply equal to n times v. But now we can rewrite that as a to the m plus b to the m, all raised to the v, all raised to the n power. So that's simply equal to z to the n, where z is equal to this a to the m plus b to the m, all raised to the v power. And there you have it. So starting here and then ending down here with the following values of x and y exhibit our infinite family of solutions to this tweaked version of the equation inside of Fermat's last theorem. So now let's look at a quick example of this. So for our example, let's look at the equation x cubed plus y cubed equals z to the fifth. And now let's observe that we can rewrite this as, or we can take those numbers three and five and then rewrite them as an equation building the number one as two times five minus three times three equals one. So in other words, in the language of our general setup, we have u is equal to three and v is equal to two. And now, well, we've got an infinite family of solutions like we saw parameterized by those numbers a and b, but we might as well, since we're going for an example, let a equal something simple like one and we'll let b equal, well, the next simplest number, which is two. And now let's observe that that's gonna give us x equal to one times one cubed plus two cubed cubed. So in other words, that's gonna be the number 729. 
and then y will be 2 times 1 cubed plus 2 cubed all cubed. So in other words, that's going to be the number 1,458. And then from here, all we have to do is note the following. So we have 729 cubed plus 1458 cubed equals 81 to the fifth power. And there's our solution. And that's a good place to stop.